And as we join the action, there is the man of the moment, Philippe Gilbert. We're on the way back from Bastogne, and as you can see, we're 63 kilometres from the finish in Arns. The peloton, which is where we're seeing Gilbert there, is now 59 seconds behind a group of nine riders. And Bob, these nine riders have just, uh, sorry, 14 riders have just come together. Five in the break have been picked up by nine chasers. But what a race so far. It's been an incredibly aggressive race so far. The peloton realizing to dislodge Philippe Gilbert from the top of all of the recent races. They have to have a very aggressive Liege, Besson Liege, and they have not disappointed. This is the Col du Maquisard, and this is the the front group here they've just come together 14 men and they're looking over their shoulder they can see the peloton being led by the omega team for the peloton they have to attack for the omega team they have to try to keep things together for philippe Gilaire. he has a ferocious kick at the top of a climb and we've seen him win the last two classics amstel gold and the flesh alone well, the Col de Maquisa is two and a half kilometres long. That's uh, just a little short of two miles long. This is one of the longest climbs today in many ways. It's certainly one of the hardest. And it has been, as Bob has said, a very, very aggressive race. The peloton are also turning onto the Maquisa now. But it's been a very difficult race to follow so far. On the way down to Bastogne, there were 10 riders got down there, 3 minutes and 40 seconds ahead of the main peloton. But on the return, and particularly on the climb of the Côte de Rossier, which was only about 12 kilometres ago, about 7 mile ago, the peloton just exploded. And riders have reached the breakaway, which was reduced from 10 to 5 when these 9 riders caught up. And uh, the 5 leaders who survived, Jesus Herrera of Movies, star, Edouard Vorganov of Katusha, Thomas de Gent of uh, Vacances Soleil, uh, Tony Galapan of Cofidis and Matthias Frank of Team BMC. They've been joined by Jerome Pino, Enrico Gasparotti is up here, Garati, the Spanish guy who won on Mont Ventoux in the Tour de France a couple of years ago, Lawrence Tendam who started it all from Rabobank, Greg Van Avermaet, uh, Darius Cataldo, Damian Caruso and Biel Kadri. They're the boys who've got up and they as you can see the gap has come down a lot because there's been a terrific reaction from the bunch which is amazingly small now a very small peloton being led by the omega squad they've done this the last three big races of the year at the Amstel Gold Race, they were there on the front. Philippe Gilbert delivered the goods for the team. They were there at Flesh Alone. Philippe Gilbert delivered once again. And so now they're back on the front. You get so much morale as a team rider when, you're, when your team leader is winning the races, which Gilbert has been very dominant this year. Well, the face says it all, doesn't it? This is Jesus Herrada from Movie Star. He has been in the breakaway all day has found it one hill too far. This is climb number six of the day, the Makisar. It's taken him out of the break, so we're now down to 13 men, a baker's dozen up front. But it's quite clear, Bob, that the boys in the peloton are fed up of being beaten in the uphill finish by Philippe Gilbert this last uh, few days. In Holland in the Amstel Gold Race, midweek in the Flesh Wallon, and they are hitting him hard today to try and stop him coming to Arns with the leaders for the sprint. Absolutely promising to be a scintillating finale. It's been very aggressive throughout the day. The peloton has been reduced to splinters because of that man right there, Philippe Gilbert, the man of the hour, the local hero. Dominant so far, looks very comfortable with about 40 miles to go in this bike race. He's followed his teammates throughout the day, having a little word with Danilo De Luca, the Italian on the Katusha team, right off to his, uh, that would be right shoulder. Yep. And so Danilo De Luca looking good also so far in today's race, but the peloton is reduced it might come back together a little bit, but a big breakaway now with 45 seconds. So there's been no rest for the weary in today's Liege Baston Liege. Philippe Gilbert so dominant, his team has been under pressure throughout the day, and we see a very small peloton left to contest the finale of this great classic Liege Baston Liege. Gilbert, Gilbert's team there all on the front uh, which is a lot earlier than they were in the past two big classic races this last week as uh, now they're having to do a lot of work to hold this race together the boys are attacking whenever they get the opportunity Jens Voigt he's just behind Gilbert at the moment he's been working hard in this move as well we just slip now to the back of the race here the Cofferdis rider who's uh, also slipping away from the back of the peloton now 
and uh, that rider there was uh, David Moncoutier well uh, the peloton is not as big as it should be at this stage of the race there's 61 kilometers to go and you know this race could very soon be all together again Jens Voigt grinding away. They have a lot of cards to play in Liege, Bastogne Liege. His team, Leo Partrek, of course, Frank and Andy Schleck. Andy Schleck seeming to be perhaps a little bit off of form so far in the spring classics, but his brother, Frank, has been racing very well. Won Criterium International and also was seventh just a few days ago in the flush alone. So Frank Schleck hoping for something big. Leo Partrek has been very close on a number of occasions to winning a classic. Haven't been quite able to do that. Cancellar was on the podium in uh, Milano San Remo to Flanners and Perry Roubaix, but they want to get onto that top step of the podium. They're going to have to race very aggressively, however, to dislodge Philippe Gilbert. And so far, Philippe Gilbert's team, Omega, has delivered him perfectly to the bottom of the finishing climbs in the last two classics, and no one has won anything except Gilbert. Well, Voigt here, anxious to bring this race back together for Leopard Trek, the team that we saw work so hard in midweek in the uh, Flesh Will on as well. And uh, my goodness me, they're not going to make a mistake and not put a man up there sooner or later today. It looks like that anyway. But he's sacrificing himself here today to get this gap closed down. Now, there's no outstanding name in the breakaway, but there are some very strong riders up there. And this is a strange formation, strange pattern the race this year, Bob, because that peloton, well, there was two 200 riders on the start this morning I don't reckon there's more than 50 60 riders left in the main field these this is the quarry we're trying to bring them back up and I'll tell you what this is going to be a tough chase and they are fully committed now to bringing this break back quickly and they're not having a very easy time of it the gap continues to go up one minute and eight seconds it was five being chased by nine they've reduced their numbers now to 13 men in the front that's Lawrence Tendam from Rabobank Zivsov is the HTC high road rider Mateus Frank from the BMC squad. This is a pretty high-powered breakaway, and the peloton very small. That's Vaux Renard. He was in the move, the early move, and he had the was with the five men that survived until they were caught by the nine chasers. So now we have 13 men in the front, and one minute and 10 seconds. So the gap continuing to go up now for the breakaway. Just about 31, 32 miles left in this bike race. Four tough climbs to come, but this is a high-powered breakaway after a very difficult race, a long race also, over 160 miles of racing, and so anything can happen. If there's any fatigue from the Omega team of Philippe Gilbert that's doing the chasing, that breakaway will become more and more dangerous as the day goes on. Well, we are tucked away in deepest Ardennes countryside here. Very strategic part of the countryside in all of the wars, going back to the Dark Ages, in fact. And uh, th that's why this race has featured so much. It was first held officially in 1894, although there was a, a race run in 1892. Most record books start counting back in 1894. And this is the 97th edition. There is the man who knows what it's like to win this event, Andy Schleck. He won in 2009 when believe it or not he out sprinted Joaquim Rodriguez who is getting fed up of finishing second in the, these spring classics I think Bobby was second in flesh will on he was second in the Amstel gold Joaquin Rodriguez the uh, man that the team Katusha has been counting on they also have a couple of contenders uh, as well in their ranks Danilo De Luca let's not discount him pretty handy sprinter at the long of a very hard difficult race and the, it's been a beautiful day weather wise but the racing has been absolutely vicious in Liège, best on Liège so far today. Absolutely magnificent. Late spring or early summer. It's an absolutely beautiful spell of weather running around this part of the world. You don't often see the hose pipe spraying riders cool. It's ruined our picture a little bit, that hasn't it, um, at this time of the year. But the riders have responded. There you can see what is left of what was a huge peloton. It suddenly was exploded on the climb of the Côte de Rossier, uh, which came at around about 50 miles to go. And now these boys are getting down to the action. Juan Manuel Garate, the Rabobank man, coming to the front now. Enrico Gasparotto in the light blue of Astana on his wheel. Konstantin Zivsov, winner of the uh, Tour of Georgia, I believe, a few years ago in the United States on the HTC squad. He's also in the breakaway, and that is a great tactical move, maneuver for HTC to have a man of, in a very dangerous break. That can give his teammates a chance to sit back and watch the proceedings from the peloton.
Leopard Trek will be very hungry in this race. Philippe Gilbert has dominated the proceedings, so every team's scratching their helmets to find out how are they going to beat this man from Belgium, Philippe Gilbert, so dominant in the last two big classics, Amstel Gold and La Flèche alone. He's got a great team working for him, and this is Jurgen Vandenbroek, fifth in the Tour de France, a young professional also, and a great star of Belgian cycling, doing big work here at the front of the peloton. Leopard Trek does have a number of riders capable of winning this, but Andy Schleck is the man of the hour. Well, we're on the climb now. We've just started it with the peloton, the climb of Monture. Uh, we saw the town of Che and the backdrop there as the riders came through. It looks like we've just dropped one of the riders from Omega Farm, a lot of there as well. Uh, to, uh, he slipped off the back of the race, and that was uh, Jan Bacalons. So he's been doing a lot of work all day. Job done for him now. He can have a pleasant pedal through the countryside, home to the finish uh, the other side of Liège. These are the leaders here. It's not often in April in Belgium you see a clear blue sky like that. And these boys concentrating on holding off a much depleted, but very, very active peloton. Amazing to see the jersey zippers slip down. It's almost like this day in the summer from the mountains of the Tour de France and uh, a lot of very warm bike racers out there. In this breakaway, there's one rider, Thomas de Hint, very dangerous. That gap has been around one minute for quite a few kilometers, even though it's a very desperate chase in the peloton. Thomas de Hint won a big stage in Paris-Nice earlier in the spring, and he should be on good form today. He's in the breakaway and looking very dangerous up in the front. Getting on the radio there to his team car on the right of our picture, Gilbert, the man that everybody's looking at. He got a tremendous reception today at the start in Liège. The cameras are on him. Even the police were congratulating him as he, as he uh, turned up to sign in for the day's racing. He has become an absolute superstar in just eight days of cycling. He really has. Well, he's looking pretty cool, calm and collected. He knows all eyes are on him for making a move today. And we'll see if he's got the legs when it comes to the finish because there's no... No doubt now, Bob, as we go on to these small final stepping stones uh, down in the Ardennes, they're going to attack him at every opportunity today. I think the La Redoux is going to be very decisive. It's been tough tempo throughout the day, very hard racing. And the La Redoux, very steep climb. It's not a long climb, just about a mile along, but it, uh, a mile long, but it does have gradients up to 11 and 12 percent. And the average for that mile is 9.5 percent. And that is just uh, around the corner for these riders. So La Redoux, I think you're going to see some serious attacks. Big breakaway also, and that makes it for a very nervous peloton. Enrico Gasparotto leading the break at the moment. Yes, riding uh, on his white specialized bike there, just uh, keeping the pressure on at the front. Uh, meanwhile, here at the back, and time for a drink, is little Danilo De Luca. He tried an attack to reach that breakaway before he got just a little bit out of his reach. They were after him, and they brought him back in. New team for Danilo on the Katusha squad. Back from the uh, the dark days of a drug suspension, but now trying to get himself back on the straight and narrow, he says. Joaquin Rodriguez, his teammate, uh, De Luca did a lot of work to get Rodriguez into position uh, in the flesh alone, and Rodriguez was second there. There was nothing to be done by the ex by, because of the acceleration done by Philippe Gilbert at the top of the Mir du Wee a few days ago. Joaquin Rodriguez was the best of the rest, and that was enough for second place. They're hoping to go one better. Danilo De Luca perhaps uh, realizing the folly of trying to get away to the breakaway and going back into the peloton and uh, hoping for better things in the next few climbs to come. You caught a glimpse just down from the helicopter on the left of our picture of all those turquoise jerseys, the same as Gasparotto's wearing. He's on the same team. It is Astana. Astana, by the way, is the capital city of Kazakhstan. That's where the team gets its name. And uh, the Kazakh rider Vinokurov is the captain of that squad. He won this race last year. He also won it uh, before his drug days came up in 2005 as well. And so uh, it was a very emotional win for him last year. Now, he's already said this will be his last liege bastard on Liège and boy he'd love to go out with three wins in this event that is for sure the record by the way who else Eddie Merckx he won it in 69 uh, through to 1975 on five occasions in that period so we're coming up towards the top now of the Côte de Monture away from the town there's the banner up front these are the leaders and they are holding on as you can see 69 seconds and despite the speed of that chasing group 
these boys are clearly going just as quickly. They are going very well. A minute 10 now. The gap is yo-yoing over the one minute mark. And uh, this is getting to be a very dangerous little breakaway. I'm thinking a guy like Thomas De Gent is now looking for a good place here. And he's been sitting on, conserving his strength. A lot of other riders up in the front. There's two Rabobank men in the breakaway. This is a very dangerous move. The peloton can't seem to get organized enough to close this gap down. And now it's just gone up to one minute and 11 seconds. They're working well together. Oscar Freire there sitting in that orange jersey looking quite relaxed at the moment. Not the sort of course that uh, Oscar Freire will like, but he's a strong man and uh, a very good sprinter. Although I don't think the finish will suit him that well. But even so, he's there to help possibly his team leaders if he gets the chance today. Concentrating here as they climb up the Côte de Montieu. The pressure has gone off a little bit and not uh, as organized as they were about 10 kilometers ago. So I reckon that they're waiting for the next climb to do something now. And as you say, the Col de la Redoute, which starts after the beautiful town of Remachon, is an absolute brute and it's where many of the spectators uh, con congregate there. And as we tell you every year when you watch this event, the local motorway, the freeway that runs down the side of it, is closed because it becomes a giant parking lot and that's the power of the people because a few years ago they did it anyway but now I think the police actually closed the road and let them use it as a parking lot now let's have a look at this this is one of the uh, Leopard Trek boys it's Fabian Veckman I think who's uh, slipped near the back of the group here at the moment Fabian he Beckman was in on indeed. the hunt wasn't he at the finish of Flesh Will On okay well as we look at the gap it's a minute 16 there's still 46 kilometers to go that's about 28 miles still to race but as always the big climbs are still to come Salt sleeping into the uh, jersey of the riders in the breakaway Peloton the aggression now is a little bit turned off at the front so that gap is going to keep going up see Tony Martin from the HTC team just there hovering near the front did a good job to grab two water bottles on the last climb and so this has a, been a very difficult Liège Bastogne Liège throughout the day also quite warm day so the riders accustomed during the springtime in the classics in uh, Belgium especially accustomed to horrible weather conditions that has not been the case on today's uh, today's race nor has it been for the whole spring here in Belgium it's been absolutely gorgeous and so uh, perhaps a different set of riders will come to the fore and be able to compete in the much warmer climate that we see now here in northern Europe that we don't normally see in the spring classics generally historically anyways dominated by horrible weather crosswinds sometimes snow and uh, most certainly rain is a constant factor in the in the uh, classics but not in this year's edition of all these great races well as our motorbike speeds by the peloton it has got a little bit bigger I have to say so riders have been getting back since that uh, huge move on the Côte de Rossier that's rider Hegedar, we've just seen the Canadian rider on Garmin Cervelo had a brilliant Tour de France last year and don't write him off to do well today either, it could be a cause for him but first of all a little matter of uh, a minute 28 seconds, he got that brilliant top 12 finish in the Tour and uh, that was a terrific result for the Canadian. Matthias Frank from the BMC squad enjoying a good day here in the front of the breakaway it's a good ride by the Swiss man on the American BMC squad Garate is the Rabobank rider Gasparotto softening things up Gasparotto doing a good job for Vino Kurov Vino Kurov can sit in the peloton now Enrico Gasparotto is keeping the pressure on and that will make the chase much harder here's some of the other names in the breakaway Lawrence Tendan is the other uh, Rabobank man along with uh, uh, Garate, Jerome Pino, Damiano Caruso, Dario Cataldo from Quickstep, and Greg Van Avermaet has also made the juncture. Biel Kadri, Thomas DeHent, and Tony Gallopan. So I think that Greg Van Avermaet looking very dangerous. He made a similar move in Milano San Remo and was only caught within the last few hundred yards of Milano San Remo. So looking very dangerous, Greg Van Avermaet. And that's why you see Matthias Frank, his teammate on the front, driving the pace in the breakaway, trying to get Greg Van Avermaet a little bit closer to the finish line. He's going to be there at the end. Yes, I think he is the one rider they'd be quite concerned with in that breakaway because he can do a ride or he can be an absolute flop and if he's gone in the breakaway this early he's got to be seen as being dangerous. There's Team Astana here and they're the man that are hoping to guide Vinokurov to his last victory in this race because he won't be riding it again next year he's on the radio at the moment talking to his teammates. 
still looking for 93 seconds and there's still 27 miles to go. Man on a mission, Jakob Fuglsang, his teammate, fourth in Amstel Gold Race. I'll tell you, the peloton did itself no favors by dragging Philippe Gilbert to the bottom of the last two finishing climbs of Amstel Gold Race, as well as as well as La Fleche alone. And so Philippe Gilbert was able to use his power and his finishing kick to beat everybody in the last two classics. This, however, has been a much different bike race. Liege, Bastogne, Liege, pre-race, all of the other big favorites have said we have to attack Philippe Gilbert throughout the day. We have to put the pressure on we have to reduce the Omega Pharma's numbers before the finishing climb and put Philippe Gilbert under serious torture throughout the day if anybody else is going to have a chance it's not as if the peloton is racing exclusively against Philippe Gilbert but they have to make a very hard aggressive spontaneous race to have a chance to beat Gilbert he's on great form and he does have so far the superior kick at the end of a finishing climb in the last two races so that will be in the back of the minds of all of the riders in the peloton and the big star they will have their teammates on the front and this is a very dangerous breakaway closing in on almost two minutes generally what we see is the breakaway that the gap constantly comes down throughout the last 10 15 20 miles of the race that is not happening in Liege best on Liege the gap continues to go up it was at one minute for a long time and now it's closing in on the two minute mark this is the peloton very small group and Fabian Wegman was dying on the back of the group and now he's at the front just desperately trying to get a little bit closer to the breakaway on his wheel is Jens Voigt. They have a huge turn of work to do. They might have to use some of their stars, some of the pre-race favorites to do the tempo to get the breakaway close enough to be within striking conditions for Andy and Frank Schleck. Well, just look at the face here of Fabian Weckman, the 31-year-old, or well, he will be next month in June. Uh, to, uh, his job now is to do this pacemaking for just about as long as his legs will keep underneath him there because he's obviously almost at the limit today. And then he will be peeling off the front, but he will hopefully keep his team leader, Andy Schleck, and arguably Frank Schleck as joint leader here uh, in, the, in the mix for that team. There's the breakaway on the left. They're not coordinated. Gasparotto saying, hey, guys, let's keep this together. Let's do something. Because at the moment, we are still pulling away from the main field, who are not just riding along in the countryside. They're actually trying to catch that breakaway trying to catch them desperately now. I think everybody realizing the danger here. Philippe Gilbert's men have been ca called off the front. It was the Leopard Trek riders of Andy and Frank Schleck that have been doing the tempo. I'm not sure that uh, Omega wants to be off the front. I think they're just not quite capable of doing it. They've done a lot of tempo, let's face it, in the last few big races. More or less the same roster for all the Healy Classics on most of these teams. Omega has, of course, they have Jurgen Vandenbroek, one of the best riders in the Tour de France, doing a lot of the work for Philippe Gilbert and when Philippe Gilbert has been brought near the finish line he's won the last two races so they have a lot of confidence we'll just see if they have enough strength left to keep making the tempo and chase down this very dangerous breakaway a little bit of a chat here with Jérôme Pinot the quick step rider in the breakaway and uh, Gasparotto signaling to quick step there any chance of a drink and that's nice gesture there from the rival squad of quick step are giving the uh, Italian there on the arrival Astana squad a drink what a stunningly beautiful day as we continue on perfect roads here for the oldest one day classic in the year one minute 42 seconds and just over 25 miles to go and next up is the giant the climb of Laradut uh, this is the breakaway that in the town of Remochamp, which means on the right shoulder as the riders approach, is the climb now of the Côte de Laredoute. Now, Côte means hill in French. I think this should be the Col de Laredoute, which means mountain, because this is a tough one. This is a very tough climb, very steep, and coming deep into the race after many, many miles of racing. Here are our leaders sweeping through the village just at the bottom of the climb, a hard right-hand corner, and it gets very narrow, very steep, and very painful very quickly. Yes, it most certainly does. We go round the back of the town under a bridge. Uh, you might catch a glimpse of the freeway, which, as I said, should be a giant parking lot. And then we climb the hill and there will be a huge crowd. Now, this is a very steep climb and you can see it all the way to the top. And I have to remind myself of last year when the race didn't break up. But these boys have been under pressure, some of them all the way from the start. Five survivors in the original breakaway of ten. Uh, that got us down to the turn in Bastogne with a lead of 340 are still in this breakaway group of 13. 
uh, just sat at the back there, Konstantin Sifsov, the HTC High Road rider. This is the narrow approach. Tight, isn't it, when you're in a, a car in double file? There's the peloton swinging off and across the bridge as well, so the gap at 138 doesn't perhaps look quite as large as that, Bob, but we're going to get on the climb very shortly. Well, you saw how narrow that road was, and when the peloton gets in there, your position is absolutely critical. That's why it's a big battle just going into the village. It's a little bit smaller of a peloton than we normally see in liege bell saint liege because it's been such a very difficult stage so far, a race so far. Here are our leaders. That's the narrow road, and you have to be in good position because just in a couple of moments now, it'll kick up. You've been on the bike 120-plus miles. The legs are screaming in pain, and the hardest part of the racing is about to begin. Well, here we go. The Cote de Lara do two kilometres, about 1.2 miles. Uh, we climb up to 169 metres of elevation there. But the big thing is, is the steep section in the middle, which is around about 17%. They need low gears. It's about now when Bob Roll rode this event. You must have been absolutely quaking in your boots at this point, Bob. It's, this is agonising, this climb right here after so long. And you know the riders with the power start to break away at this point. So a lot of times all you can do is watch them vanish vanish into the distance, but every once in a while, a dog has his day and has some good legs. There's the <laughs> motorway that just the riders have gone under, and they'll uh, do a couple of little turns, and it'll get very steep, and uh, that's the hard part of this race. This is incredibly difficult, and you see all the spectators out. They're always starting to go berserk here. Everybody coming out to see Philippe Gilbert and see what he can do on this climb of La Redoux, one of the historic climbs in cycling, and one of the most exciting things oh, to do as a, as a pro. <laughs> yes. Bob, that is amazing how this race has grown despite how long it's been going for. They've even got marquees down there now. They're probably beer tents. So everybody's given in to the power of Liège, Baston Liège on the Côte de la Redoute. 36 kilometres to go. Leopard Trek on the front. A goodbye for Thomas de Gent from the breakaway. He's the first to go of those leaders and he was one of the original 10 that were leading from almost the gun again today. Gasparotto sets the pace here. The British flag flying on the left of the road there. No sign of a British rider up front just yet. There is the Philippe Gilbert Fan Club Beer Garden. So uh, you can uh, get a glass of beer, come out to the lawn, and watch Philippe Gilbert and his teammates try to hold off a whole peloton. This is the breakaway just going by there. Not a lot of cheers for them, but they'll be waiting for the peloton. And the gap now starting to come down. One minute in, in six seconds, and that's Fabian Wegman and Jens Voigt on the front of the peloton doing a big chase, and the peloton realizing the danger. Oh dear me, there's been a little bit of a crash here and this is a replay of it and uh, it looks as though it looks as though we've got uh, Stefan Den Denifel there, Leopard Trek is the rider on the left of the road. Well, Bob is explaining how do you get the peloton down the narrow approach. Well, there's the answer, you don't in fact. The other the other guy on the right, Maxime Monfort, so Leopard Trek lost two men there. Well, that's the, that's the worry when you come to these narrow climbs after a big boulevard and the peloton screaming down the descent and we saw them come into a very small village and an absolutely tiny road and uh, two riders coming to grief there with another couple of uh, others uh, at the back of the peloton that's why position is so important it's absolutely critical at this fit it's this stage of the race uh, life at the back of Lara Dute now is not so pleasant for some of these riders uh, this is Matthias Frank going off the back he was in the breakaway as well so he's also dropped from those leaders now so we're thinning down at the front as Gasparotto steps on the, I was going to say, steps on the gas there, Gasparotto, and he uh, comes up towards the top of the climb. They've reduced that breakaway to about nine men at the moment. And Gasparotto doing all of the work here with, uh, I think it's... Um, the rider alongside him there looks like a Francais Jujur rider in the breakaway there. And Greg Van Avermaet, third wheel, riding very well. The two Rabble Bank men, Garate and Lawrence Tendan, still in the front group, but it's really splintering at the front there. Volren are trying to make that acceleration. He's made the little bit of a juncture, but now it's a much smaller group. But look at the peloton, 53 seconds now. So the pressure is on in the group, and the breakaway is starting to crumble. In fact, it's Jerome Pino of Quickstep in second place here behind Gasparotto, Greg Van Avermaet in third place for Team BMC. The Leopard Trek boys, despite the fact they've lost two men at the start of the climb, still piling on the pressure here at the front. It's Voigt doing the work ahead of Frank Schleck. Then comes the teammates of Philippe Gilbert there from Amiga Farmer Lotto. They've still got riders from Astana, Rabobank as they come up towards the summit. Well, they're holding it well together. We can't see the back of the race, of course, as they scream down the ears here. 
It, yep. it might be even Jakob Fuglsang there setting the pace for Leopard Trek. Jakob Fuglsang, he is a good rider, fourth in the Amstel Gold Race. Voronov off the, off the back of the breakaway, Gasparotto in the front, Leopard Trek chasing Frank Schleck, second wheel there, so things getting very heated in the peloton right now. Frank Schleck wearing the colors of the national champion, a very, very slightly different colors to the team strip. You can see the colors of the Luxembourg flag uh, on his racing jersey near his camera, second rider in. That's the champion of Luxembourg, Frank Schleck. Uh, it looks as though the gaps are here, but will they be decisive? They should come together once over the top of this, but they've shed a few riders and certainly the brake has been damaged. Well, the heads of state at the front of the peloton right now, I think I saw Vino Kurov up there in the front, along with Danilo De Luca. Robert Haysink was in the front, but getting very dicey now in the field. Frank Schleck and Andy Schleck still up there in front. Philippe Gilbert, Sylvain Chavanel struggling here yeah. off the back of the peloton. On oh, the Tour of Flanders. Yes, very, very good point. When Fuglsang goes to the front, it's going to be painful, one of the pre-race favorites. Well, coming over the summit now. Now, there's no quick uh, fix to this climb. You don't go downhill. You ride onto a plateau before you descend, so you can't actually consolidate on the descent. But it looked as though Sylvain Chavanel, a man for the flatter roads, perhaps. But it was in this region, don't forget, he pulled on the Maillot Jaune uh, in the Tour de France last year as well. But uh, didn't keep it, of course. He crashed out on stage three when he finally shed his yellow jersey there. Now, this is looking to me as though Gasparotto has led them all the way up the Col de la Redoute, or the Côte de la Redoute. And uh, the damage has been done. They've halved the advantage of that breakaway. 47 seconds is the climb time, and uh, is the gap, rather. We've reduced it by a number of eyes, but until our cameras can get themselves together down there, I'm not sure how many is left in the breakaway, but I would be surprised if it's more than seven. This is the camera pans down the pack. Once again, this pack has come over with the strong riders not being troubled by those steep slopes, which means that uh, it's going to be left to the final climbs that are still to come. Two more big climbs. The Falcon's Rock climb, which was introduced a couple of years ago. People are saying uh, that is where the winning move will come from. I wonder. It's certainly strategically well placed at 236 kilometers. Christian about Vanderbilt 150 there. miles in. American rider on the Garmin T, nine Americans starting, Liege, best on Liege. This is the back of the field, so Christian will hope that it will regroup a little bit. He's got some riders to work with, but they need to uh, close the gap down to the peloton to have a chance to win this race. But Christian Vandeville is starting to come on form. He's looking for big things in the summer in the Tour de France this year. So, as the Belgian flag flies in this country of two very different uh, topographies, we're no longer in the cobbled area of Flanders, we're in the beautiful green hilly fields of the Ardennes here, as we watch the doyen of the classic races and the end of the spring classic races, certainly today as well as we line up for the big stage races. OK, well, there's the breakaway, reforming, but no longer 13 men at the front, and would you believe it, the gap has nosed up again. We're now 51 seconds in front. The gap is still 53 seconds. Confirmation of the names for you. Gasparotto, Sifsov, Garate, Tendam, Greg Van Avermaet, Jerome Pino and Biel Kadri are the men who survived from the original break, which at one stage was 14 strong. Now, this looks like an attack by the champion of Denmark going off the front of the peloton, Nicky Sorensen. Nicky Sorensen just left the peloton there at the, the very tough false flat after the Côte de la Redoux. It's not an easy road. It's a heavy-duty road even after you're finished with the climb. And he's coming up here to the second group out on the road. The leaders have dropped these men. They are about seven in front, but these were the, uh, formerly in the group until the Côte de la Redoux. But Nicky Sorensen has handily come right across the gap from the peloton. Now he's in the second group out on the road. He's a Saxo back man, and that's a very good tactical move. That's a perfect move at the moment. But as I say, we've got two serious climbs to come. We don't count the actual climb up to the finish as one of the famous climbs of the route, uh, but it is very, very often uh, the place where they sort out the actual winner of the day. Because it's hard enough. It comes about half a mile from the line. 32 kilometers, exactly 20 miles left to race now. We're heading down slowly but surely back towards Liège, but then we cross over the center of Liège and climb out up into the suburb of Anse. 
There's Sorensen, doesn't waste much time, Bob, straight to the front. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Nicky Sorensen can get all the way across to the leaders. He will tow the men <laughs> that were in the group before. This is the group, Cataldo, Sorensen, Caruso, and Mateus Frank, Eduard Vorenar, the Katusha rider on the wheel of Nicky Sorensen. He's going to have a tall order to close the gap down to the leaders, and the peloton hot on their heels now. I think that, that'll come back together. Very tough day in the saddle for the riders, and yeah. many hours also. Look, he's waving them through, but these are the, all of these men were dropped on the climb of Laradut, they are very tired bike riders. I don't think he's got any hope of getting any help from these boys at all. As uh, Tony Gallopan tries to come through and says, uh, see what he can do. At least he's going to have a go. But take a look over your shoulder, and you're going to see the whole pack are now coming down towards you. You can imagine a plane ride of six hours would uh, be very fatiguing. And this, how long these guys have been on the bicycle today, and to produce the watts at the end of the do, it never ceases to amaze. Yeah, over six hours they'll be in the saddle for today. It is a long time just riding a bike, never mind racing it over some of the toughest roads in Belgium. As we now snake our way down, away from the climb of Laradut. Oh, a park car on the road. That's uh, lucky to get away with that. He normally would be towed away by now with the passage of Liège, Baston Liège. Sprimont, and on towards the Côte de Sprimont, which is just as we climb out of town. Yuskatel now to the front of the peloton. Haven't had any men in the breakaway, so they're chasing hard. Sammy Sanchez, the Olympic champion currently, had a good ride in La Flèche Wallonne and uh, might hope for something here in Liège, best on Liège, if he's been able to recuperate. One thing for sure, the pressure is off the Omega team. They've had a tremendous run of success so far, so uh, getting results is not a problem. And a lot of times, that makes the racing more enjoyable for the riders on the team. When you're winning, you get the domino effect, and it continues on. And so, Philippe Gilbert, if this group takes him to the finish line, that would generally be fairly foolhardy. He would be able to go ahead, and uh, he's shown he has the dominant sprint so far in the, these long classics in the hills. Arrière du peloton to the back of the group at the moment are our cameras placed. 30 kilometers to go, 19 miles to the finish, 38 seconds the gap, and it looks like a little bit of an explosion here from Dario Cataldo, one of the men in the breakaway, in the chase group actually. He's been up front today and now he's going to the back. Cataldo in the break in the peloton and off the back all in about five five miles of racing so uh, but when the legs go that's all that's all she wrote there's nothing to do about it so as we rejoin the leaders here 29 kilometers out now the next challenge is uh, the roche F uh, Falcon, which is the falcon's rock it came into the tour this race a couple of years ago and a lot of riders have been saying that is where it will be decisive today but i don't think they could have expected quite such a hard race to the climb today it's been a good race been a great race so far the peloton uh, absolutely exploding on la Redoux. it's regrouped a little bit still on the front maxime montfort one of the pre-race Dreamers of winning this, but now he has have to work. He's had to work. He's had to keep the pressure on Philippe Gilbert. A lot of the Omega riders have been dropped. They did a big turn of work in the middle portion of the race, closing in the kilometers. There is Philippe Gilbert, fourth wheel at the moment. But look at the Astana squad, looking very strong. Alexander Vino Kurov, right in the center of your screen there, looking uh, like he's ready to pounce in the light blue jerseys with the yellow stripes. Remy Di Gregorio having a good season. The Frenchman, formerly on French teams, had a hard time trying to get to the top of the sport but he won a great stage in Paris Nice and he's arrived now on the Astana squad and he's going to do everything in his power to get Alexander Vinokurov the win on today's race. Now, as you can see as we look here there's uh, an obvious split in the main field because the race referees are keeping the cars away from the race they've allowed just neutral service to come forward that'll deal with any problems here and uh, the peloton is definitely split after the climb of Laradut. So this is a crucial moment for all of the race now. Now, all of the pre-race favourites, the Schleck brothers, uh, Vinokurov, Philippe Gilbert, are still in that group. Um, I did mention earlier, in fact, that we, we lost Maxime Monfort, but it wasn't Maxime Monfort, it was a Sky jersey, so it was, uh, in fact, uh, Lars Peter Nordhaug who went down as well. So Leopard Trek only lost one man on Laradut as it happens. Jerome Pinot, quick step rider on the front of the breakaway. 
making a very tough tempo. The war of attrition has begun big time in the peloton. On La Redoute, it was uh, reduced in numbers. It was split in half just about, and the very strongest men at the front, and you know the heat is on and the pressure is coming. Here is the breakaway. They've splintered as well on the last climb. They've got two more hard climbs to finish off Liege, best on Liege. Sometimes it regroups here, but it's been a very tough race throughout the day, and it's going to be an incredibly hard finale. Whoever wins this race is going to be a great champion. Well, we're not too far away from the climb now of the Roche au Faucon, and it's a nine and a half percent, virtually one in ten the slopes on average, and it is just over a mile in length. It's where they must attack, I think, because if they carry Philippe Gilbert across the streets of Liège in the league group, he's going to turn on the style again for the flag, and I don't think he's beatable just at the moment. At the moment, he does not seem to be beatable. He's dominated the last two hilly classics on the calendar, and uh, that will give you some pause. You have to attack him. You can't let him have a free ride to the finish line and unleash that furious kick that he has. You have to attack him, and those attacks are going to have to come in the next couple of climbs if anybody else is going to have a chance to win this bike race. You don't want to race against one man necessarily, but you do have to do everything in your power to try to attack him, put him onto, in, onto into difficulty, and we'll see how that plays out. The Schleck brothers have promised the second to the last climb, the Rocha Faucon is the one to attack on and put Ju Philippe Gilbert into difficulty. 40 seconds the gap goes out to 41 as I speak and by the way we haven't mentioned Alberto Contador well the reason is he's not riding this event for some reason Alberto Contador didn't enter this race although he finished ninth last year after they disqualified Al uh, Alessandro Valverde from third place so he actually crossed the line in 10th place all of the work being done by Maxine Montfort of Leopard Trek. Here we go now before we descend into the town of Mary and then we start the climb. This is going to be crucial and you know, I've just got a feeling, Bob, that Andy or Frank Schleck is going to do something on this climb. Well, they seemed a little bit more agitated than normal in the pre-race interview, so I think they are feeling the pressure from the press. They've been a little bit critical of the Leopard Trek squad, the super team. They haven't been able to deliver the goods in the big classics. Fabian Cancelar are very close in the first three big classics of the year, but in these hillier races, they haven't been able to do very much. Frank Schleck was seventh in, in uh, the flesh alone, and they are going to try to do something. They are really sacrificing men with chances to win this. Maxime Montfort's been at the front. So has Jakob Fuglsang been at the front. And when Andy Schleck sees those teammates at the front, he knows that he has to do something special in the finale. Well, there it is. La Roche au Fosson. Average of just under 10% or 1 in 10 and crucially placed here just over 12 miles from the finish. When they go over the top, it will be 12 miles from the finish. Now, they're sending away the neutral service car there to go in front of the riders to clear because this road gets a little bit narrow. And it looks as though we've got the first rider to be cracked here because this is uh, Garate. Former Karate. Spanish champion dropping off the back. And also Zipsoff. Zipsoff, yes. Also in trouble. Biel Kadri looks to be in trouble. Greg Van Avermaet is the man trying to match the acceleration by, uh, by Gasparato. And Jerome Pinot trying to get across also. Well, Gasparato is having a great day out on the roads of Liege, Bastogne Liege. Greg von Avermaet came across to this group from the peloton at the perfect moment, but he's trying to match the acceleration by Gasparato. Gasparato were having a great ride. Well, this is the man they really want back in the fold, uh, Greg van Avermaet. And there's the attack. That's why Maxime Montfort was launching the move. He's got his teammate into the front now. Andy Schleck, followed by Frank Schleck, getting onto the back wheel, Philippe Gilbert. Boy, the big three just hit the front. This is incredible. Andy Schleck going straight to the front. That front uh, was a pre-programmed move. Frank Schleck, his brother, also contributing. Philippe Gilbert realizing the danger and closed that gap immediately. So we have three of our pre race favorites now attacking the peloton and I dare say it's going to be savagely reduced now for the rest of this bike race well this is going to be the most signaled attack we saw it coming so the professional riders must have seen it coming and nobody could go with it except Philippe Gilbert the Schleck brothers are firing one two now they've been in the winning break before as a one two and they finished in a four-man break they were third and fourth 
That wouldn't be the way now if they were to catch the leaders. Right past Garate, they'll see the other riders in the breakaway momentarily. Gilbert is going to work with the Schleck brothers. This is going to be an incredibly exciting finale. <laughs> well, this oh is gosh. where, the, this is like, like, indeed, last year, this is where the big moves came as well. It was advertised in the press that this would be the decisive slopes of this year's Liège, Bastogne Liège. The riders knew it, the riders talked about it. We saw the way Maxime Monfort was setting the pace as fast as he could go towards his climb ready to launch his two joint team leaders the Schleck brothers but that boy Philippe Gilbert it'll take you'll have to get up very early in the day to outwit him he will not outwit him you might be able to uh, outpedal him on today's race this is the riders being dropped now again by the men in the peloton from behind break up in the pictures there um, perhaps the cameraman getting as excited as we are following this race well, Schleck is uh, going to have to ride like literally two men here because he's got two men to look out for. They can do the old tactic of attack and counter-attack until they wear him out, but they've got to be strong to do that. Biel Kadri must wonder what happened. He was in the lead a few moments ago, now slipping away on the back of this climb. This is a very long mile, Bob. This is a very long, tough, steep mile, average gradient. Oh, Vino Vino Kurov, in trouble. A little climb. bit of a problem behind. We haven't seen him, but Changed he his bicycle. He's on the bike change. there to be Glinsky's. There is Andy Schleck on the back of this little breakaway. Here's a replay. Let's see what happened to Vino Kurov. You're right, Phil, changing bikes there with his teammate. I'll tell you what, that was smart work there because he was only lost a, a couple of meters on the field. But uh, I don't know what, what's taking the time. But Glinsky had to adjust his own bike to give it to him. That's interesting. Well, there, this is, uh, this is Gasparotto now come to the back as this powerful trio are just ripping through a corridor of noise up towards the leaders. The Italian flag being stuffed in the ear of Gasparotto. It will not help deafen the sound of this crowd. Frank Schlepp going, Frank Schlepp going deep now. That's Gasparato desperately trying to hang on. Greg Van Avermaet trying to do his best with Jerome Pinot. This is a huge acceleration. You get used to a certain tempo, and when it's twice that fast, Vino Kurov off the back. Bad luck for Vino Kurov. He looked to be perfectly placed going into this second to last climb, but he had a mechanical there, and it'll be a long, hard road for him to wow. catch back up to our leaders. That is bad luck, Bob, for Alexander Vino Kurov there. He's still got a long climb to put it matters to right, but the big thing is the three most important cyclists in the race all joint favors to win have just gone off together and they've caught the leaders just like that 20 kilometers 12 miles now from the finish as we begin the plunge down yet again here we still have to come though the Cote de Saint Nicolas as we head up towards the finish and then a little kick up towards the line itself the breakaway, which has led in one form or another since this race began, has just been blown across the Arden hillside. Remy Di Gregorio there. He'll look for Vino Kurov and try to drag him back into contention. Just under 12 miles to the finish line. Here are our leaders. Three of the pre-race favorites are there. Andy and Frank Schleck, as long, and along with Philippe Gilbert. Philippe Gilbert looked to be willing to work with the Schleck brothers. And we'll have to see how that plays out. But a great tactical maneuver here by the Leopard. Trek team. Now they have two men that, that can ta attack Philippe Gilbert throughout the finale of the bike race. Biel Kadri struggling in between groups now. Yes, Biel Kadri now in that horrible area of no man's land because he's not going to catch the leaders and for sure the chase is going to catch him. Well, the three favourites all attacked in unison. They've gone away from the field and I don't think there's anybody back there got the legs to stop them now. But there's always the question, which one will win? There's only one more slope to come of note. We'll see the city of Liège. We'll see the famous Liège Standard Football Club Stadium. We'll be on the coat to St. Nicolas. And boy, that is going to be some climb today because it should surely decide the winner of Liège, Baston Liège. Our camera's staying with Biel Kadri here of AG2R. Well, as we take a break, let's just remind ourselves how it all happened. An incredible attack which came from Andy Schleck. Brother Frank was there, but bad luck for the two Schlecks from Luxembourg because so too was the big favourite, Philippe Gilbert. Well, everybody's still dizzy here in Liège, Baston Liège. Look at the peloton trying desperately to regroup as they go over the top of the Rocheau Fosson. Uh, but the, the breakaway is over the top and speeding 32 seconds ahead of this big bunch, which has come back together, Bob. And for me, 
there's no one capable now of catching that breakaway. I think the breakaway is gone for today. Yanni Brockovich, Radio Shack man. He is in the second group, the big peloton out on the road. Great to see Oscar Frere, not a climber, more of a sprinter, but able to, uh, to uh, put himself in the right position. And he is in the big peloton. 30 seconds. It's not impossible that uh, things might regroup before the last climb of the day, but we have three of the big pre-race favorites. Omega will do no more work, nor will Leo Partrek. Their men are in the front. Yes, but look at this now. The three legs of the three favorites is blown away now. Gasparotto, who was riding so well, but it's been too long up front for him. Just ahead of him has gone. Oh, you feel the pain with him, don't you? Jérôme Pino has gone as well on a little unofficial climb. This one doesn't have a name, really. And as we lift our cameras, we're not going to lift our cameras. We're going to go straight up. The only man hanging on to the big three is Greg Van Avermaet. And he was their biggest concern, and he's still here. From the American team, BMC, Greg Van Avermaet, that's a great ride. Pino now struggling. He was trying to catch back on. He was able to regroup after being dropped on the Roche à Fosson, but not the case here on this fla false flat. 28 seconds to the peloton. Real desperation now for the chasers. Damiano Cunego in the pink and blue there in the middle of your screen, having a pretty good ride. He missed out on that acceleration. He would like to th put things to right here in the finale. 30 seconds, and the breakaway seems to be going away. If Philippe Gilbert cooperates along with the Schleck brothers, well, then it'll be a very tough for anybody to catch that leading group. Well, interesting, uh, Greg Van Avermaet. Uh, last year, he was riding on the same team as Philippe Gilbert, but he, for some reason, the results weren't coming, and he lost his place on the team. He was picked up by the BMC team, and he clearly is enjoying riding for them. Uh, but he knows all about Philippe Gilbert and all about uh, his good form as well, because he was 16th in the flesh well on. So he's got the legs, uh, but he's got to hang on now. And this is Gasparato here, looking where the chase is. It's coming up, I'm afraid, Enrico, not too far behind. Looks like, uh, is that Kolobnev down there as well? Kolobnev from Katusha. These are the uh, men struggling to get back on terms with the peloton, and uh, they are the peloton itself. Very small group now. It uh, looked like Christophe Lemivel, the Garmin rider there, who had a great ride in La Flèche Wallonne. This is Kolobnev, along with one of the Spanish riders, yeah. Igor Anton. Anton. In between the two groups, just off the front of the splintering, disintegrating peloton, and they know that it's now or never with just about nine, ten miles to go in the bike race. They have to get back to the leaders if they're going to have any chance to win Liège, Baston Liège. The four leaders heading down this split carriageway now as they race into Liège itself. They're just 10 miles from the finishing line. Their biggest fear has been realized because Gilbert is with them, but it's so unlike his victory in the Flesh Wallon and his victory in the Amstel Goal race because now he's in the leading group and not the big field. Greg Van Avermaet now, he was in the break. He was the only man capable of matching the acceleration from the three big stars, the two Schleck brothers and Philippe Gilbert, and now he has not been so far asked to contribute to the pacemaking. Here's Kolobnev and Anton being caught by the peloton. It must be that Vinu Kurov has got caught back on, and that is Gasparato was in the break, and now he's in the chase group trying to close the gap down. They'll sweep up Pinot momentarily, but there'll still be four men off the front, and the gap is now 25 seconds. Well, the second rider in turquoise there is Roman Kreuziger himself, and uh, he's doing the pace, so you're right, Bobby. Wouldn't be up there. Well, uh, having said that, we're at the back of the group, and there's no sign of Alexander. Oh, there's still a few more riders. Uh, but Vina Kulov should be in that group, otherwise his teammates wouldn't be setting the pace. Although I think possibly they might have been trying to slow it down just there. Clock isn't saying that though, because we're down to 27 seconds at the moment and 15 kilometres, just under nine, mi just over nine miles uh, still to go. Well, great riding by Van Avermaet. He has done a good job to uh, be able to handle the acceleration once the Schleck brothers and Gilbert caught them, and now he's just tacked on the back, and if he can recuperate a little bit, he has a great chance to win liege Baston liege and that would be a huge surprise and a great result for BMC. Yes, he packs a very, very good sprint finish, you know, and uh, in the World Championships where he got a fine fifth place uh, last year, they were in Geelong in Australia, and that was a steady uphill finish uh, in the main street in the city of Geelong in the state of Victoria there. First time the world had ever been held away from the mainland, really, down in the, in the Australasian area. And uh, he does pack a finish, so that's why uh, they were worried about him in that breakaway, and now he's hanging on like a limpet with the leaders. Now, I'm pretty sure that at the back of this group we must find Alexander Vinokurov because those two teammates are now working pretty hard at the front here. 
Daniel Moreno, the Katusha rider there, taking his turn at the front. Danilo De Luca still in that group. And Joaquin Rodriguez also doing a chase. So Katusha, they need to put as many men on they as they can on the front to bring this group back to heel if uh, Joaquin Rodriguez is going to have a chance to win Liege best on Liege. Well, Van Ava Marte flying the flag for the Americans here, even though he's a Belgian with his team colors, BMC. And uh, goodbyes is turning out to be over the winter as well, because he's holding on to the three big on form riders of the Classic. And it's amazing, Bob, the three pre race favorites all going together. All going together. It was, uh, the, they knew it was coming. Philippe Gilbert must have uh, been listening to uh, the reports on the news because he knew when the Schleck brothers were planning to attack, and he was right on that move. Great riding by Gilbert. But the peloton has not given up. Look at that lot. A long, long line of about 30 riders. 26 seconds back and seven and a half miles to go. Katusha and Astana trying desperately to close the gap down to these men. Frank and Andy Schleck, they have 30 second advantage, but they have to play their cards absolutely perfect if they're going to dislodge these two Belgians, Philippe Gilbert. Let's not forget about Greg Van Avermaet, not one of the hot pre-race favorites, but he is a very handy bike racer. He's on American team now, BMC, and he is the perfect tactical position right now. He doesn't have to contribute to the pacemaking. I think that he was really conserving his energy in the break Away. He didn't make any big accelerations from the break, and that's why he was able to handle that acceleration from the three big race favorites, Andy Frank Schleck and, of course, Philippe Gilbert. Well, there we are, closing right in on this Belgian. The Belgians are beside themselves watching this on television, I can tell you now, because two Belgians in a breakaway and two riders from Luxembourg. Uh, that is a very, very good move by the Belgian boys, and Greg Van Avermaet has only once uh, had a top ten finish in a classic race, and that was in Milan San Remo this year when he finished in ninth position and he's there now and somebody must have known something because his for his name has been on a lot of people's lips for the race today absolutely he had a great milano san remo and it's a perfect race for his talents here he's been solid in the classics this spring and he's really fulfilling his promise now he's come away from the belgian teams onto an american team and he's found his wings and he is realizing uh, a great result right now even if they went to the line and he was fourth out of this group which i think he'll be able to uh, improve on that he's looking good for a podium position if not a win in liege baston liege and that would be an incredible surprise it would be shocking and uh if you're the team that lost greg van avermaet quick step and omega also well then you you uh, will rue the day that greg van avermaet left your ranks well, I'll tell you what, we're descending through the outer suburbs now of Liège, then we'll cross the city, then we'll go up through the Italian quarter, heading up towards the finish. 39 seconds, they're gradually prizing open a lead over a very select chase group here now. Van Avermaet has said, that's it for me, guys, I'm not helping you now. The three favourites are here, I'm going to sit here. The position we call the ticket collector, he just sits there. And uh, Van Avermaet, really, I think he'll put this down as his finest performance in a one-day classic. He has won a stage in the Tour of Spain. There is the famous football club, Standard de Liège. And uh, that's where Eddie Merckx used to support, too, uh, that famous club. And he would have loved it if Axel Merckx had turned to football and played for that club. As it was, his son Axel became a pretty good bike rider himself and won the Belgian Championship. Now, sorry about the pictures. When we go under those bridges, the signal just holds the picture for a second. But this is very much a movement of action from the chase pack. 42 seconds. I think the elastic just snapped. Well, Frank and Andy Schleck do not want to take Philippe Gilbert all the way to the finishing line. They have six miles to dislodge Gilbert somehow. I think we're going to have some very aggressive riding. I think you'd have a you better have chance of pushing over the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Well, the two Luxembourgers, and uh, you can go back, I think, in history and find never two great riders from Luxembourg coming to fruition at the same time. They've had one or two good individuals. As we cross the River Meuse now, we are about to head up through the Italian quarter. The finish is but five miles away. We're in the streets of Liège. Behind the riders now is the big stadium, the standard football club of Liège. Still sat at the back, and I don't think he'll be there for the whole of this race. Greg Van Avermaet. We have one climb to come, the Côte de saint Nicolas, and it's about to play the biggest part it's ever played in this event. Philippe Gilbert throwing away his last water bottle. 
inside of six miles to go before the finish. 47 seconds, so the gap continues to go up. It's going to be tricky for the Schleck brothers to get rid of Philippe Gilbert, let's face it, but it's going to be tricky for Gilbert to get rid of this man in black and red, Greg Von Avermatt, and uh, they cannot start to watch each other too closely. They still have to continue to cooperate at least for four or five more kilometers the next three or four miles. They have to continue to work together if they're going to have a chance, or somebody can slip the peloton. I think Frank and Andy Schleck, they have to attack now. They have to try to isolate Gilbert and perhaps get a chance to sit on his wheel and rest in the sprint. There's no doubt about it that Gilbert is faster than the Schleck brothers in a sprint to the line if that's what it came down to, and they have to avoid that at all costs. The attacks must come soon if the Schleck brothers are going to have a chance to win this race. Well, don't be alarmed if you see Italian flags flying more than the Belgian ones because this is Little Italy here in the area of Liège City now as we go around the back to approach the Côte de Saint-Nicolas. Two Luxembourg riders in the break and the brothers at that. There's been two Luxembourg victories in this event and you go back to 1954 to find Marcel Ernzer who beat Raymond Impenis who was a Belgian rider. Now, is uh, one of the Schlecks going to beat another Belgian rider to the glory today? Belgians have won this race 57 times out of a possible 96. Quick shot of uh, Enrico Gasparotto still on the front of the peloton. He was in this group moments ago. He was dropped from that group, so presumably, unless he started to feel a lot better, there's no way he can catch the four men in front who have just dropped him on the previous climb. So uh, desperate moments for the peloton, and these four men, it looks like, will be contesting the finish. But Frank and Andy well, Schleck, they have to start attacking now if they're going to have a chance to tactics win. Tactics for me, Bob, would be the Schleck will have decided which one wants to win. Will it be Andy? Will it be Frank? And it'll be the other one who'll make the move. And he will go on the climb because he'll force the reaction from Gilbert. Greg Van Avermaet, you can't trust him at the back. He may make a move on the climb as well. Uh, Philippe knows now he's going to have to defend himself against three riders and he's going to have to have it in him to counter every attack, which is surely to come. And you definitely can't trust Greg Van Avermaet sitting on the back of the field. He has a great chance to win this bike race. He's uh, not done one turn of work in the whole last 15 or 20 miles. He's just been following the wheels of the three pre-race favorites. Philippe Gilbert, he has his hands full today, but he oh. definitely has the fitness. Bob Roll, a master of understatement. He certainly has his hands full, no doubt about that. Now, just to distinguish the two brothers, it's Andy Schleck in the lead at the moment. He was 71. Frank Schleck is number 76. This is the start of the climb. For my money, it's going to be Frank Schleck who's going to make the move as we hit the Côte de Saint-Nicolas. It is just 1.2 kilometres to the summit, a little under a mile. And watch out for this guy in red because as this climbs up, it twists and turns. There's the Italian flags as we head up towards the last climb of this year's event. And I feel Frank will make the move, although he's sitting there rather nonchalantly just now. One kilometer, just a little bit of go for this climb, but then it flattens out before the finish line. Philippe Gilbert in perfect position there, just glued to the wheel of Andy Schleck. Frank Schleck looking like he might do something here, might make an attack. They have to start attacking. Perhaps they wait till after the, the climb, and then they start to put in the attacks and try to isolate Gilbert. But Gilbert has been racing so well, so strong. He's been so ah. dominant that you have to do something, and maybe nothing is possible to be done against Gil Philippe Gilbert. They Van have Avermont, actually slowed down here. Yeah, they have done. They are frightened of Philippe Gilbert. They've actually made him take the lead here. This is a case of deja vu going back to 2008 on this very climb. Four riders were together at this point. Alessandro Valverde of Spain won. Rebellin was second. Frank Schleck was third and Andy Schleck was fourth. They got beaten although they had the numerical advantage. They're reliving it again three years later. And Peloton here led by Kolobnev closing down the gap a little bit. Jürgen Vandenbroek doing a good job there to slow down the chasers. If you have any legs left you have to attack now time is running out for the peloton this and the time corner. is running out for the select brothers too they have to attack Gilbert too the pack are coming back 28 seconds at seven kilometers four and a half miles to go Andy Schleck has lifted up the rhythm this is the area where I thought one of them would have attacked they distance here just a little bit Greg Van Avermaet he's tired but he knows if he can get up towards the finish he can sprint Gilbert is having none of it he's showing them how strong he is he's dictating the pace to them now. Gilbert now on the front. He's gone to the front. He is trying to dominate like he has done. He is going from a long ways to the finish line. We'll be within three miles here at the top of the climb of the finish. But Gil when Gilbert is going this well, even if you want to attack, you might not be able to. 
Well, Philippe Gilbert, he is the man of the moment here. There was a Luxembourg flag left and right. There's one over there on the far right as, as well. That's the regional flag rather than the national flag. But Philippe Gilbert is riding this race like the champion he's been for the last eight days. And he's got only the two slicks now. They've got rid of Greg Van Avermaet. He couldn't hold on. Well, Gilbert will hear the cheers of the frenzied Belgian fans. Goosebumps. Gilbert is attacking. He and goes. he is distancing himself now well, from the Schleck brothers. Gilbert has gone. This is the cheek of the day because he's advertised the fact what he can do. And it's Frank Schleck who tries desperately to hold on. There's the second kick from Gilbert. Now he's got rid of Andy, but he hasn't got rid of Frank. Frank Schleck has got to stay on that wheel. Andy Schleck has got to look up. Try to keep pedaling, try to get back onto that wheel. Frank Schleck will not do one move to help Gilbert get to the finish line, and he might be able to win this race. Great riding by the Schleck brothers, but Gilbert just too strong. Greg Van Avermaet, we haven't seen him for a moment. He is in real trouble, but Andy Schleck has to keep on digging and try to get back to the wheel of his brother. His brother won't contribute whatsoever to Gilbert in the hopes that Andy Schleck can come back. If he does get back and has some legs, watch for his attack. But when you can split up a duo of this quality like that by just riding at the front then boy you are very very confident indeed and Gilbert is a very very good sprint finisher as well so I, I you know I would pitch him against Frank in the sprint and that's the way it may well turn out just three miles to go two men still looking for that first place Closing the gap now, just in the distance, you can see Andy Schleck, he's just about to make the juncture. Let's see what he does now tactically. He might go straight past. Yes. That would be a great move. And then Gilbert would have to think about dragging Frank Schleck back to his brother Andy. But if Andy doesn't have the legs, he'll try to get on the wheel and just catch his breath for a moment. Well, if, Phil, if uh, Philippe Gilbert can win this one, he is really something very, very special now because trouble just hitched up at the back. And so Gilbert may as well turn off just for a second and coax the boys through on him if he can. As we make our way towards the finish, almost turned right there, I think, but they got the right route. Inside uh, five kilometres for the leaders now, which is three miles. Greg Van Avermaet, can he get back? Because he'd be double trouble if he could. He can sprint as well. Look at this, the two Luxembourgers freewheeling now. Courageous, up another kilometer. Courageous ride by Philippe Gilbert. He's been able to handle all of the accelerations and put in a vicious dig himself there. That dislodged Andy Schleck, but he was able to get back on terms with his brother. It's going to be a very tricky finale. Now they're going to start to talk about tactics a little bit, maybe suggest a few attacks, and then you sit on the chase of Gilbert. I don't know. He looks so strong that I don't think they'll be able to attack him in the last couple of miles of racing before the finish line. Well, did you look at that then? Frank has put his brother back up front here, and to do the pacemaking which means they're keeping Frank fresh uh, as the expected anticipated winner and he won this race in 2009 Frank has had two third places but never a victory and maybe he's the man to take on Gilbert but he better be ready to produce the sprint of his life to beat Philippe Gilbert because I think he really is a man possessed well it's been a while since a triple was accomplished it's very rare to win Amstel and Liege, best on Liege, and Flesh Wallone, but Philippe Gilbert is looking like a likely person to do that momentarily. Well, the weekend double, uh, which is winning the Ardennes race down in the Flesh Wallon and the Liege, has been done by Alessandro Valverde and Moreno Argentine. But to do all three, I think the only man that's ever done that is David Rebellin, back, I think it was in 2005. Now we'll see. Philippe Gilbert just won. Uh, trouble from Luxembourg comes in double packages to spoil the party this is a chase group establishing itself here Rigoberto Uran the rider from Sky there tacked onto the back of a little bit of a group a uh, little bit of a chase group here they are 30 seconds behind that's the peloton that's group number three and uh, we'll have to see where Greg Van Avermaet courageous riding by Van Avermaet to uh, to be with these riders before the last climb but then dislodged on the Saint Nicolas climb we are in the neighborhood where the finishing line will be in just a couple of miles they'll get the red flag and that's just about seven eight hundred yards before the finish yeah it was seven years ago actually in 04 when Rebelline did the magical treble but since then he's been in disgrace uh, again uh, found uh, guilty of drugging up for the events so we can't really take that with the same credibility we might take a treble by Philippe Gilbert this is that very select chase group but the racing for the places now that is for sure Van Avermaet has been picked up by them so we got five versus four and the peloton just back of this group 
Van right. Avermont really struggling now. That's what happens when There's you're in Frank. the breakaway. Frank, the concentration. We've got him in a Luxembourg sandwich now, and they're going to snap it shut if they can. Now they've allowed Gilbert back where they want him, in the front. Surely one of them is going to try and attack as we go inside a one and a half miles to the finish. One has got to try and draw the sting of uh, Gilbert because if he starts the sprint, he'll finish it. Oh, most certainly. you got to start from a long ways out. Two kilometers, 1.2 miles before the finish line. Philippe Gilbert, absolutely magnificent. He knew the move was coming. He had the legs to follow that. He put in a very hard acceleration himself just to keep uh, Frank Schleck on the defensive. Andy Schleck was able to get back on terms, but they're going to have a very tough time to beat Philippe Gilbert in the sprint. He's a very fast sprinter, whether it's uphill or flat. He's one of the fastest men in the whole peloton and against two riders should have a pretty good shot at winning this race Well, the two boys from Luxembourg will not be happy with second and third like they finished third and fourth together back in 2008 uh, Because this team Leopard Trek the brand new team they represent it's their team by the way the two boys from Luxembourg They will want a win and close the classic season on a high note That's for sure because Cancelaro had second and third in the uh, uh, Flanders classics now the Rakovic coming in with uh, Nicky Sorensen there, Jerome Pino, another quick step man. So trickling in, there's Brockovich in the yellow shoes just coming in. A pretty good result for Radio Shack, but Very you've got to hand it to Philippe Schilbert, the dominant <laughs> see, rider in the hills this year. Fairy tales do come true. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. What a great, great result for Philippe Gilbert because they did everything. They changed the tactics today. They couldn't let him come in the group. They thought he would win from the group in a sprint, as he's done in the past two races. So they took him away in a breakaway. But they didn't ride very cleverly, I didn't think. They needed to attack, but needing to do, wanting to do, and being able to do, that's, that's sometimes, very good. Uh, yeah. sometimes not the case. And when a rider is on form with the talent of Gilbert, almost impossible to beat, especially these very 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 tough 160 plus mile race there is no hiding only the well. strongest man can win that tactic sometimes it's one thing to talk about it's another thing to employ and Philippe Gilbert the absolute dominant man in the hilly classics this is a real confirmation of his talent here's a replay of the sprint beautiful slow motion images from Belgian TV Yes, they tried their best, but they didn't have the strength of this man. He lives here. Vervier is not very far away. And for the last eight days, he's been going home every night because he lives in the region of the three biggest bike races of the Spring Classics in this region. And he's won every one of them. And that will make him very special in the local bars and cafes tonight. He is now overnight from just a star to a superstar. Well done, Philippe Gilbert. Absolutely wonderful cycling. There it is, the two-arm salute for the third time in eight days. There's the result. Philippe Gilbert becomes the first Belgian to win this race since Jean-Luc Van den Broek back in 1999. Frank and Andy Schleck, second and third. Kreuzinger it was who got fourth there for Astana. Well, a professional since 2003, Philippe Gilbert, the man from the Ardennes. He raced through his home village of Remerchamp today. Now he stands atop in the 97th Liège Bastogne Liège. He is the first Belgian to win this race, uh, Bob, since Jean-Luc Van der Broek back in 1999. 99 was the last Belgian winner, but this was perhaps the most dominant by Philippe Gilbert. Not a man that will contest the overall standings in the Tour de France. The men flanking him should be doing that a little bit later in the summer. Frank and Annie Schleck, big favorites in the Tour, and it's great to see that the Schleck brothers are on form. They're not quite at the dominant level that Philippe Gilbert is, and you have to be at the top of your game like Philippe Gilbert is to win these great classics. And for Philippe Gilbert, for the record, this is 11th classic victory for him in his career, and I would say it's the sweetest. <laughs> Thank you.